This is a little bit different. Well, it's a lot different. And I'll be reading. I, I read the prologue earlier. And I apologize for anybody who checked here for a different reason, but this is the easy way to put the video on YouTube. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll be reading it, and I will I might be able to change the picture on a little bit, but oh yeah, this is what my moderator drew for me, which is fantastic. This is actually for my channel. And it's going to be a lot more well done. And, but, uh, okay. So I'll be reading this. Uh, chapter 1. And I the name is guy Orion. I like the name Orion. <laughs> Orion tried to make the footsteps as light as a small child, just like the chain off the hunters who, who would uh, bring home large game. And for the past hour, he had done just that, slowly going through the f forest, making sure not to step on any. For a moment, he was one of his bow as he saw the deer in front of him. Orion knew he had little still for bow. He'd spent the last week or so trying to be as good as he can before he had to leave. Three days ago, the city of Orion, his namesake, had been invaded by the Edens. Twelve thousand men were in the city when it was attacked by a, by a force five times that or so he had heard. There were many rumors. But what he did know was, a, was that men were taken from all the surrounding area to help save the city until the main army arrives in the south. Orion's thoughts were cut off with Brandon's feet yet again stepping on a on a, stepping on a branch, the deer quickly ran away from the both of them. Brandon, Orion yelled, you wanted me to help you learn how to shoot a bow, but every time we get close, you step on something. Don't mean to, Brandon complained. You never do, but I don't think you, but I don't, but I don't think you have skill with a bow. Brandon starts to kick the ground with his feet. I don't want to get killed. Orion grab, grabs a wooden axe out, out of his hand. This will keep you alive as long as you keep this in your hand, because we both know you are a worse aim than mine. They both laughed. Come on, it's time to head back. We have to, we have to get ready to leave. After some time, Brandon asks, So how long has your brother been in the army? Orion thought for a moment. I think, I think it's been five years now. He numbered when his brother left. His family was was never good with goodbyes. His father had shaked his brother's hand. He had given him a long hug. And his, his mother's soft words and a bag full of bread or food. He wasn't quite sure. That was it. Orion started to think that it was normal, but then they had arrived in town. A group of the boys were at the city center with their families around them. After a moment, he spotted his and Brandon's family there as well. So they both picked up the pace to where their families were standing. Boys, you're back. Did you get anything? Ryan looked at Brandon and he could tell that he did not know what to say, so he stepped in. Brandon had many kills, were the of legend, and could feed a thousand men, but we cannot eat trees. Families laughed, and Orion could tell Brandon was a better mood. Well, it's a good thing I planned for that. And with that, Brandon's mother opened the pack she had made for them to reveal pounds of meat, cheese, and fruits. It lasted them many, many days of heavy, of heavy eating. But why don't they actually try to ration? All you have to do is make sure you both come home safe. She quickly added, and in one piece. I will, ma'am. I will. Brandon went over to the rest of his family when Orion's father asked him to come over. His father was a man in his fifties, with short gray and white hair. He was wearing a brown vest, white shirt under, with white shirt under. His mother was standing next to him wearing a simple blue dress and her hair brown. I want you to wear this, and at all times, our family has served this nation proudly for the last 25 years. 
in that time I've gotten a few things that saved my life and I hope it will save yours too. And with that his father held up his sword, nearly two feet long of good steel and a simple handle. Orion thought his father would give him something, yes, but not this. Are you sure? Orion asked. I am. Now say goodbye to your mother and meet Brandon with the other boys. As soon as Orion turned his mother, she hugged him. All you have to do is come back. That's it. Just remember we're here waiting for you. I will. And with that, he joined Brandon and the others. As he started to walk out of the village, Orion felt a single tear run down his cheek. He would come back. Orion hoped he would just be the same person. After some time, they stopped for the night there. There were about a dozen in total, and most of them did not like either Brandon or himself. Just for the fact that he spoke his mind about how people were acting, and Brandon because his father changed very high prices for even the little things in his forge. As he thought about that, Brandon started to poke the fire with a stick. There were only two around it, while the others had their own. He told Brandon they should go to sleep for the night. Wait, Brandon asked. What's, what, what, is, what is going to happen to us? <sighs> Ryan had a deep breath before answering. <clears throat> we call the rest of the men from our village and bring honor to our houses. In a cold, automatic voice, like he heard his father say so many times before, but didn't really feel like saying it now, and didn't feel like it right saying then. What honor do we have? We live in a village. We're supposed to bring honor to the real houses, not a cottage. But what do you really think? John lay down on his makeshift bed on the ground. I don't know. I just don't know, Brandon. Orion was awakened with a slant by Brandon in fear. What is it? It's all gone. All the supplies and everything else. Ryan shut up and looked around. Fear gripped him for a moment. Then he laughed. <laughs> he expected this to happen. Why are you laughing? We have nothing. We don't we don't even know what way we're going the road. Ryan got up and looked at either side of the road. We go left. How do you know, a oh, wise one? Orion smiled. Looking down, pointing, footprints go that way. Brandon grabs Ryan's sword and handed it to him. So maybe not everything. So are we just going to keep on walking until... What? We see a town that hopefully is the place we need to be? Ryan started walking down the road. Come on, we have a long way to go. Brandon quickly followed Ryan, turned to him as they walked. I can't give you answers. All I know is that we have to walk down this way. So let's see if we can figure out what to do next. And, okay, that is chapter one. I'm going to go into chapter two. Well, thanks for listening. Okay, uh, this place takes place with multiple viewpoints or multiple perspectives, kind of like what Game of Thrones does with their TV show. And this is not the final version. While this will be um, uh, edited and greatly expanded, basically what I did was put the chapters between two to three pages, and it's double sided. So last one was four. Of this one, this one will be six. I just need to find someone or convince myself to type it all up. Okay. And here we go. Both Orion and Brandon have never had a long day. Whenever Orion had tried to ask for help, to whatever few people actually traveled th this way, they would laugh. This is getting us nowhere, and we are out of food. O Orion had turned him out hours ago in the hopes of making a bad situation worse. Hey, Orion, there's a girl behind us. I think she's trying to get our attention. Orion turned around to see for one, to see what she looked like, and two, and most important, if she, if they should speed up. There's what all they had, and he didn't want to lose his life. She was shorter than he was, but Orion could tell she was no highborn. 
She wore a leather traveling outfit, a small pack. What is your name? It seems you have been trying to get our attention. My name is Claire, and I have been following you for some time now. It's impressive how little would-be recruits of the army, she said with an even voice. Brandon looked at Claire with shocked eyes. How did you know? Claire looks at a large rock nearby then and sits down. She looks over at the tree line before answering. Three ways, actually. First, by by how poorly supplied you are. Nobody eats that little food unless they don't have it. To, they don't want to make it last, or want to make it last. She points to a small piece of meat on a piece of cloth, cloth next to the campfire. They had pulled out that morning. Orion and Brandon had met a traveler on the road that morning. He was willing to part with some food in return for what little coin he had. Sadly, the man refused to let them travel due to past experiences with government officials. The men went for some time without them. For nearly an hour they went about it. Then as suddenly as he started, he stopped talking, told them thanks for hearing his old stories, and offered to show us his glass shot. Claire's talking brought him back. And finally, third, men from all around here, along with the army, out being gathered to help to the half-destroyed city. Brandon was not as idiotic as Claire thought he was, and he wanted to prove it. Who are you looking at? He said to Ryan. S said to Ryan. Since you've started talking to us, you keep looking over that query. <laughs> Claire folded her arms. I think Towns Bay means he knows more than he actually does. Orion looks right where he had kept seeing Claire look. Come on, what is it that's so bad for us to see? Claire once again folds her arms over her chest. Fine. Might as well seeing as how your friend can't bear not to know. Orion looked over at Brandon. He was focused on that tree line more than even Orion was. You okay? Brandon even looked at him when he answered. There's some... There's some... Some dip. There's there's something shining right over there. Orion looked over to the spot and then to Claire as she turned to face the spot. It's alright, Kira. They know you're there. Come out. Time to go. A woman emerged from the trees. Orion finally got a look at the person. It was a woman, he guessed, in her late forties. She wore the same type of outfit as Claire's, but more loose. Fitting. More like she'd done this for some time and slowly customized her appearance to fit exactly her. Hmm, impressive, he thought to himself. She also had a sm small pack, much larger, and by the looks of it, completely full. Will we travel with them now? Yes, Claire said. Too quickly for Ryan's taste. Kira seemed to be more of asking because of disinterest, more than actually fear. Or being even a simpleton. Do you know where you have to go, or even supplies to get there? Neither Orion nor Brandon knew what to say in their defense. So that settles it then. Let's be off. With it will be days before we get to Trirene. Claire said as she marched right past them, with Kira right behind her, without a hint of annoyance on her face. Neither of them could tell if it was because of them or Claire talked or Claire taking charge of their son little group. Brandon started to pack up his things when Orion stopped him and called out to the new leader. Why should we follow you? What makes you the leader? Now when Claire turned around he saw real anger on her face. Please explain to me how you get to Trirene. And if you can, then you can be the leader. Of course Orion did not know. I was on the map that was stolen by the boys of the camp the first night. Grim realization, he had to accept it and help Brandon gather what little things they had left and hurry to join Claire and Kira. They had walked for hours, twisting and turning to rough dirt roads. There would have been no way Orion could have, could have found his way, but what Kira said 